What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great day so far, and testing negative for those viruses. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Virus Update for Wednesday, July 23rd, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. There's a lot of different viruses out there, and I try to talk about as many as I know about or anything I see, such as news, data, wastewater, really anything I can find to keep you safe and informed of what's going on. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below. And today I got to give a thank you. Someone supported the channel. Thank you to those who support the channel. If you would like to support the channel, you can do that down below. There are ways to do that down below. Alrighty, several different things to talk about. Uh, measles, you know, there's a lot of news about that today. But let's start off in the COVID category. And with COVID, you know, we've learned about brain problems. Matter of fact, my website, datareport.info, has a whole section, COVID's effect on the brain. Well, get this, Laura Myers tweeted this out on X, uh, one of the accounts listed on the list of uh, pages that I use. I believe I've added her name to it. If not, I best better because she tweets and posts, used to be called Twitter, posts fantastic stuff. It is 2025 and Time Magazine just published a piece titled COVID-19 made our brains age faster. Now what she's about to say next, she's 100% right. We have known this since 2021, 2022. We were misled on purpose. This is permanent damage and forever reinfections are expected. We will be blaming lockdowns until we die. Okay, yeah, uh, until we come out with something that can prevent infections effectively, reinfections are gonna continue to happen. And now that we know COVID can damage the brain, the more times you get infected, the higher the chance of your brain getting impacted, the higher the chances are of you having new brain issues such as memory loss, strokes, all kinds of different things. There's oh so many different things. I mean, it goes beyond the brain, but yeah, we knew about brain damage and now Time Magazine just says, oh, uh, COVID-19 made our brains age faster. All right, sticking in the COVID and brain category. Yeah, this is popping up too. The pandemic aged our brains whether we got COVID or not study finds. I mean, just the stress of worrying about trying to stay safe from COVID. It's a lot of people out there. You'd be surprised if you're new to my channel. You would be surprised how many people still take precautions and still take this serious. Um, is it the vast majority of people? No. Is it enough people? No, but there's still us in the community. Hey, I'm one of them. Take a look at this. Yes, I still mask. I got a whole bag full of masks here that I brought with me on vacation. I mean, anytime I go somewhere, I mask. I'll be going somewhere tomorrow. Going to be masked for that. It's what we need to do. I mean, try it and prevent yourself from being infected the best you can. Why? COVID can age your brain. It really can. This virus can uh, really age your brain. And back in the early days of the pandemic, there was something else that was helping to age our brain. When COVID first hit in the United States and really all around the world, everything just came to a grinding halt. The world shut down. The stress of lockdowns, fear, and social isolation. I hate how they use that word fear because, you know what? It's sad, but it's reality. COVID does do terrible things. It's not fear, it's reality. And social isolation appear to have left a mark on our brains. Experts say it may be possible to counteract the changes. Okay, just wanted to share some things at the start of today's video about COVID in the brain. Since we're talking about COVID, let's take a look at some COVID cases. Italy reports 1,312 cases in the last 30 days, 42 cases among healthcare workers in the last 30 days, 62 years is the medium age of cases in the last 30 days. 49% of the cases are males, 51% are females. 11 deaths in the last 30 days and 659 people recovered. Everything that you see today in terms of the news portion, you know, before we go to talk about air quality, will be in a post on my website. Either get to it tonight or at some point tomorrow. 
hoping to get to it tonight versus tomorrow. More on that in just a little bit. Uh, taking a look at this, the nation of Yemen has experienced over 1,400 measles cases from April through July of 2025, a 219% increase in cases from the same time period last year. The bulk of the spread is uh, from controlled areas of the country where low vaccination rates and anti-vaccination is a problem. So, uh, yes, Yemen is dealing with an issue. And Singapore is also dealing with an issue. And by the way, that uh, report on Yemen was posted by Steve over on my website, datareport.info, and the international measles tracking threat. Singapore is seeing a rise in measles cases, but the risk of large outbreaks is low. There were 14 measles cases as of the week ending in July 12th compared to 11 in all of 2024. Again, not a lot of cases, but more than they had the entire previous year. So cases are going up there. Alberta over last weekend saw a, a jump in measles cases. In fact, they saw 47 new measles cases there. In New York, this is in the United States, Saratoga Hospital lifts mask mandate after concerns over measles exposure. I get it, uh, but you know, Working in the emergency room, there's a phrase that comes on a show that comes on the History Channel. You may have heard of it. You may not have. Uh, it's called Pawn Stars. You know, it's these uh, people that own a pawn shop. It's a family that owns a pawn shop in Las Vegas, Nevada. And there's a phrase that they say, I believe it's in the intro to the show, in the theme. I never know what's going to walk through that door next. Well, you know what? The same can be said about the emergency department. People that work in the emergency, the nurses, the doctors, they never know what's going to walk into their emergency department next. If it's an emergency department with a trauma center, could be in the case of Saratoga, the Northway, Interstate 87, could be a big wreck. Could be someone who has COVID, could be someone who has flu, or it could be someone who has a case of measles. You just don't know what is going to walk through that door next, which is why I think it just makes sense. Masking should just, universal masking should just be Common sense when you're working in an emergency department. You're treating people that are injured, that are sick, strokes, heart attacks, uh, high-risk people come in for problems. I mean, come on. It just makes sense to have masking in health care. But here we are. They're lifting the mask mandate. Meanwhile, some random Joe Schmo could show up with COVID, measles, RSV, flu, you name it. Eh. It's just a sign of the times. Moving on to this, we don't even need to read the rest of that story. Uh, Santa Fe County, New Mexico, is reporting that uh, a measles case has been confirmed. And get this, new infection brings New Mexico's total cases to 96. Yes, 96 cases in New Mexico. That's quite a few. Unvaccinated child who traveled outside of the country is the detail of that case. All right, now a couple notes. Tom Jones, who is a uh, singer, uh, Tom Jones is canceling, or I should say Sir Tom Jones has canceled his gig, his most recent gig, hours before going on stage due to concerns about his health. It sounds like he's doing with, dealing with some sort of upper respiratory infection. He was supposed to play in North Germany. So yes, Tom Jones uh, is sick at this time. And I got a feeling as we get further into the summer, and the second half of summer, we're going to see more and more of this. That tracking thread over on my website, the uh, you know list of performers who are sick or or can't shows. Yeah, I think that it's going to continue to grow. And we're already have we have already surpassed the number of posts from last year. Although there's some banter in there, but uh, we've already surpassed the number from last year. And mind you, last year we didn't start that thread for 2024 until the middle of the year. So. Yeah, that's something that is continuing to grow. All right, some sad news here. And, you know, fitting that you just saw black screen there for a second. Why? Because, well, Ozzy Osbourne, you know, he was he was pretty much the one who started heavy metal. Like him or not, um, that's not what we're here about today. Uh, sadly, he has passed away. He was 76 years old, pretty much started metal. He had Black Sabbath. Then he uh, pretty much went on to his solo career and stopped for a little while. Then he came back, 
you know, there was a song flying, hi again, uh, mom, I'm coming home, road to nowhere, uh, Iron Man, that was Black Sabbath days, yeah, a whole bunch of different things over the course of his career, and, uh, some people say he was the Prince of Darkness, I think is what they call him. I don't know. But Ozzy Osbourne has passed away at 76 years old. He has had a whole huge list of uh, health problems over the years. Drugs was involved as well. A whole bunch of different things. Uh, and we don't see the actual cause of death at the end. All right. Taking a look at what's going on with air quality today. If this does not load, that's okay. I can tell you precisely what's going on. Portions of Canada are dealing with wildfire smoke. Some of that wildfire smoke has made its way southeast once again. So places in the Middle Atlantic, places in the Great Lakes, are once again dealing with air quality problems. Right as I go to refresh it, it starts back to, how about that? We'll come back in a couple of minutes. I got to show you this. I'm not good for EMS calls today in a number of areas. First off, in Pinellas County, Florida, there have been a high number of calls the majority of the day, and we know Florida's doing really bad for COVID. Uh, Philadelphia yesterday had EMS calls over 800. Again, yeah, um, almost 850 calls. There you go, 847 total calls. And take a look at this. Now, here's Montgomery County right now. Respiratory emergency is starting to show up. But take a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. We are going to get this to load. There have been, yeah, and still are a lot of calls and guess what i'm starting to see more sick person one sick person two sick person three sick person four sick person's been showing up several times respiratory difficulty uh throughout the day i've seen that several times and we know covid is starting to rise in pennsylvania and we know COVID's starting to rise in southeast pennsylvania as well so this is rather concerning my friends i am not happy to see that whatsoever coming back to this uh air quality page. You know what? Guess we're not going to get that today. Just be aware. There are some areas out there that are dealing with there that comes. Uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Uh, I think the air quality problem in the east is going to expand the next few days tomorrow and Friday too. It's going to be really hot in the east. I actually saw one computer model showing a temperature of over 100 tomorrow. Not in Washington, D.C. Yes, in Washington, D.C. Yes, in Philadelphia, but Boston. Yes, Boston could get near 100 tomorrow. And if the air temperature does it well, the heat index will. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a hot day. Take a look at this. Canada, wildfire issues. Uh, a little bit of air quality issues on the West Coast as well today. All right, let's take a look at what is going on. They actually have EMS calls for Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Haven't showed that in a few days. And you can see here there are currently seven calls right now ongoing there. All right, taking a look at what is going on in New York State today. And we're going to find that New York State, not doing terrible. Yes, they have definitely started going up, but we're not seeing the hospitalizations, unlike yesterday, did not go higher. Here's the new cases, and they reported 317 cases today. You can see here the uh, the trend line, and it's starting to go up a little bit. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Here's hospitalizations statewide for New York State, slightly lower than yesterday, but still higher than last week. 253 in the hospital, 19 people in the ICU at this time. Taking a look at some wastewater sites today, if we can, I did want to show at least two wastewater sites. And what I can tell you is nation here on wastewater scan is still coming up at high at this time. There's still that wonky movement at the end of the chart. Uh, things continue to in Florida. And Florida really is our worst state at this point. And we're also starting to see North Carolina now starting to show up with some high wastewater sites. And we still see the levels being listed high in the Midwest, high in the West Coast, medium in the South, and a medium in the Northeast. And I think a part of the reason why South is coming up medium again is uh, Louisiana looks like maybe, you know, I don't know if it's Louisiana that's doing it. Let's see. Yeah, there's one orange there, but which indicates high, but Georgia, Atlanta, which is big population, we can see things are not high there, and Birmingham, Alabama is not doing that. In fact, let's take a look at Birmingham, Alabama. I think we can do chart details here. This is Village Creek. It looks to be low, but though it looks low, uh, we are starting to see a slight, you know, overall trend of upward for COVID at this time. Now let's go somewhere on the West Coast, can we? Seems to be this is starting to move a little bit faster. And let's go out to the west, and we'll check L.A. We have not done that in some time. 
you know, often those charts for LA, I don't know why, but often they're just ridiculously zoomed out. And uh, we'll go to the central one here. And uh, medium for COVID. That's not good. Let's see what the chart shows. Uh, the chart at this time, though it's coming up medium, uh, yeah, it has started to go up. And then at the end, it was a wonky downward movement. And now uh, let's go somewhere in the Midwest. And then somewhere in the northeast, if we can, and then that will be it for today. So we'll go up here into the Midwest. How about we come somewhere in Iowa? Can we get near Cedar Rapids? We, well, you can see here, you know what? We want individual site. You can see there is a high site here in southeast Iowa. We also see Indiana near Louisville. That is showing up high at this time. And Wisconsin's still good. Uh, portions of Minnesota, you can see there is one medium site there at this time and let's go over to the northeast shall we and we'll see what's happening there let's refresh this page in the northeast we still do have high in dover new hampshire and we also do have a couple other high locations at this time you get the point the covid wave is growing here in the united states and that is going to continue at least in august and in some cases with back to school and not too far away. Some places will start back to school very soon. Uh, with back to school, that is going to enhance the wave as well. Yeah, you can see here, Dover, New Hampshire is still high. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, that is now listed high. Let's take a look at that real quickly. Can we? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, things are starting to trend higher there. That is not good. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the virus update. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below. Ways to support the channel are down below. I will see you again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Have a fantastic uh, Wednesday afternoon. And a quick note, we may not have a virus update tomorrow. We may actually take a day off from the virus update and do the next one on Friday. We'll see. I do intend to uh, maybe do a couple things here in Maine tomorrow, which may not allow me to have time for a virus update. We'll see. Either I record something early tomorrow and then uh, have it set to post later in the day, or you see one of those later updates that come in the five o'clock hour. So uh, stay posted on social media, X, Blue Sky, and my Facebook page. I will announce whether or not there will be a virus update tomorrow. Alrighty, folks, see you again next time. Stay safe, everyone. Enjoy your Wednesday afternoon, and thanks for watching.